I'm gonna show you today how to do a good wax up. And a lot of videos that I've seen that show people how to do wax ups, I'll either leave some things out for some reason, or don't really show you all the materials you should have, or leave some tips and tricks out too that I think are pretty important. All right, so right here, man, this is basically where you want to inspect your models. You want to make sure that they are good standing. You don't want to see no chips, you know, air bubbles like right here. You can go ahead and dig those out and make it look more like a tooth should look like or the person's tooth that you're working on. After you got that out the way, what you want to do is get your bowl of water. This could be the cold water, or warm water, whatever water, but the water is just going to prep your model for the oil so that it doesn't really stick to the wax and the wax doesn't stick to the model like where you can't get it off at the end. Because you want the max wax to be removable. Like I said, whatever the wax looks like, once you bake it all up, that's what your gold is going to look like. So you want to be able to remove it without pitching it too hard and screwing it up. Now, pro tip, after you submerge your models in like water, they become a little bit soft and it softens the stone. So it makes it a lot easier to dig out the air bubbles and stuff like that. So if you're struggling on that part, go ahead and dunk them in some water, take them out, and then continue. Now onto one of the most important steps when making grills is defining the gum line. Now, a lot of people don't mention this step when they're showing you how to make grills, and this is one of the most important things because basically when dentists do crown fittings for their patients, they push the gums out of the way. This is kind of the same process in doing so. You want to define the gum line, dig around the gum line right here, and just make it a little bit deeper so the grills kind of go down a bit. So, not too deep, but you'll see what I'm doing in a minute. So before y'all start going too crazy with this, you want to push down and not so much into the tooth, okay? So you're not pushing into the tooth when you're doing this. You're really just pushing down. You're not trying to make a cavity in the tooth. You're just pushing the gums out of the way. And this is pretty much the depth you want here. You don't really want it too deep or too far down. You kind of just want it, I'd say, half a millimeter down. So I have another model here, and this model, you kind of don't want it to look like this. So I have a lot of double lines. I kind of pushed into the tooth in some places, like right over here. Um, the double line there, you're going to have to find or like thin out with the um, tool, and now you're affecting the shape of the, or the fit of the tooth. It's not the best thing in the world. Now right here, this is a good tooth prep. Now you can see the gums, the teeth anatomy still looks very good. Uh, it's pushed down. This one was done with like the hand drill. I like doing it way more with the hand drill. It's a lot more accurate. It feels way easier. Um, but not everybody can afford that. So that's why I showed you how to do the manual way. You want to, of course, do the front and the back of the teeth. Uh, not just one because, you know, you want it to fit all the way around. So that's kind of how you do that. So just showing you what the rotary tool looks like when you do it. It's, it's, like I said, really easy. I'm not using the correct hand piece here, but I just haven't bought it yet because I'm lazy. But you want to use a hand piece that allows you to grip a little bit closer to the burr so you have more control. This is, I'm, I'm kind of playing it risky here, but I've been doing it for a little while, so I kind of know how to do it. So it's, it's not as bad, but this is how it looks. Just reiterating one more time, you're going to push down, all right? You're not pushing into the dang tooth. You do that, you're going to F up the anatomy of the tooth, you're going to mess up your fit. So just make sure you push the gums down and not in. Now go ahead and get your baby oil on that. Go ahead and pour it in that little thing right there, and then you're going to go ahead and get them Q-tips and apply it to the uh to the mold now you might see that little green thing in the background ignore that i'm just rearranging the clips because i obviously forgot to do it so make sure you do this before you start applying anything on to your um before you start waxing up all right so apply the baby oil q-tip or paintbrush it don't matter now you're gonna get yourself a sheet of wax try to you know measure it up to your mold of course you don't want to have a long ass piece so cut it where you need to cut it don't throw it away because you will be using it later Then you're going to take that sheet of wax and you're going to dip it in some warm water. Now, the harder the water, the faster the wax is going to get all, you know, flimsy. So you want it to be somewhat malleable. You don't want it to be OD manual. Ma ma you know what I'm talking about. 
You just want it to be malleable enough where you can firmly place it on the grills and start getting an impression of the teeth through the wax. So you don't want it to the point where it's folding over and ripping like it's all floppy. You want it to look good. You know what I'm saying? Like, see how it's right there? You can start seeing the impression of the teeth come through the wax. It's perfect. It's nice. Now, when you place it down, you really don't want it to fold over on top of each other. You could be a genius and, you know, cut it out like an origami type style where it doesn't do that. But that's a lot of work. So normally what you're going to do is place it over like this. You're then going to get your wax tools and thin it out in places where it needs to be thinned out. And you're going to add wax where it places where it needs to be more thick. So, but it's the best way to start it off. Right here, you're going to keep, you know, thumbing it down until you get those impressions. You want as much impression as you can so you kind of know where you're going to be working off of. So you don't want to push too hard to where it's ripping through the wax. You just want to get really good detail from the wax to start off. Now at this point, this is where I like to use the wax tools. Now you don't got to use these wax tools, but it just makes a lot more sense to me. So you're going to use this point here. I'm just showing you what it looks like, but you're going to use this one here and you're going to start impressioning the gum line and the margins of the teeth. So you're just going to push down a bit. It might be a little sticky because you just dipped it in some warm water. You can dip it in cold water alternatively to harden it up a little bit. But this is basically what you want to be doing to get that good gum line and teeth impression. A lot of people got their grills looking like chiclets. That is stupid. Make them look like teeth because that's what they're supposed to look like. Um, right after this, you can go ahead and remove them and, you know, try taking them off and just seeing how it looks just so you can kind of get that feel like, oh, I'm doing something good. It's looking like it's supposed to and get some motivation because you got a little ways to go. Now, I know we've been primarily looking at the front and working on the front a lot, but don't forget the back. Now, the back is really important because this is where the tongue is going to be the resting. This is called the lingual surface of the teeth. So you want to make sure that this looks pretty proper and feels good because that's where the tongue's going to be at. If your client realizes that it's all bulky and gross feeling, they're going to realize that you're not really professional or would really know what you're doing. So definitely try to make define the gum line, define the margins of the teeth, and you'll be pretty much set. All right, so after you define the gum line really well, you're ready to start cutting away all that excess wax. Now, as you can see, we're actually using all our tools that I said you're going to need. I was just BSing. I, like, you see how we're actually using it? You're going to go around the gum line and try to cut. Sometimes your wax could be kind of sticky and it's going to be annoying trying to cut if you have a dull blade. Make sure your blade is sharp. So cut around the gum line. You can get these X-Acto knives from the Walmart, Dollar Store, Michaels, any arts and craft place. And just go gently and slowly because you don't want to rip your wax all the way up and you have to start from scratch. It kind of sucks. So just go gently, take your time, cut around the gum line. Now do the same thing in the front. I mean, you can see there's a lot of crap places like I'm pointing out here that are going to have to be touched up, but that's fine. I'll show you how to do that. Um, normally I would make it look a little bit better before taking off all the wax, but I'm just trying to show you how to do a video. It's going to look really good regardless of the end of it. So yeah, let's just continue. Mm -hmm. I bet some of y'all realizing this is a lot more work than what I thought it was going to be. Yes, bro. This is what you do. So next, go ahead and try to reshape in the teeth, I guess. You want to just start pushing it back down, making sure it's back at the gum line. And then the places where you obviously see are effed up, really bulky wax, um, the gum line that's exposed, you're going to clean all that up. Now, in order to clean up the bulky wax, this is where your technique comes in. Some people like using the X-Acto knife, as you see here, and scraping it away. I like using the wax tools and doing it. Some other people like using a wax pen and melting it down a bit, then using the X-Acto knife and all the other crap. This way, I like doing it only because the X-Acto knife is sharp, but I'm just showing you different ways to do it. Eventually, though, you're going to get to the point where it's starting to look pretty good. So, I don't know if you can see, but on the left side where my thumb is, remember it was bulky over there? Now, it's not as bulky. Same thing over here, you're knocking it back down. You can see how it looks flat and no longer like a tooth. Yes, you're gonna have to go back in, redefine those margins, redefine the um, interproximal areas and like the, uh, the lines of the teeth, which is called like the interproximals, and make it look a lot better, okay? So it's like reshaping, make it relook, kind of, you're just gonna keep going back and forth like that. The main tips I can give you right here, honestly, is just to take your time and really try to be an artist with this stuff, man. If you're doing this for the money, you're going to be like, yeah, it's fun and all. You get some cash. But at the end of the day, you got to have some passion and flavor with like you making grills, you know. So use your tools. Actually take your time and really try to make these look like teeth and make them look good, you know. 
All right, so after you got everything pretty much squared off and it looks okay enough to start filling in some gaps, you know, making some areas that need to be thicker, thicker, that's what you're gonna do. So right now I'm showing you all the show parts that are showing on the margin. You don't really want that. You want to close all these gaps up, okay? And the way to do that is with your wax tools, your wax pen. The main tools I use are just literally these two right here. I don't really use the other ones too much because I, I don't have much use for them, but I like starting with the bigger one first and then later when I fill up all the big spaces, I'll go with the smaller one and then start it. You want to place these tips on before you turn on your machine. Obviously, it's going to be hot if it's on, okay? So, yeah. Once you power on your device, I like staying around 250 degrees to 260 degrees to actually start waxing. Sometimes I'll put it all the way up to the max just to like, you know, file down some fat, pa fat patches of wax or what do you want to call it. But normally when I'm not debulking or anything like that and just actually adding wax to the models, I stay around 250, maybe even 240 sometimes. People don't tell you that part, bro. That's important. Like I had to figure that out on my own, bro. They don't tell you that part. You also want to go ahead and clutter up all your wax, put it into a ball, and this is what you're going to use in order to get your wax. Um, well, obviously, you're just going to dip your pen in there and then get it on there. Okay, now another tip. When people try to get the wax on the pen, most people try to dip it like that. But I found that it was a little bit easier when you're trying to get the wax on the pen. You normally angle it down like this and then let the wax run down the pen. Now, of course, what I'm trying to show you, it doesn't really work out too well. Like it normally just does it automatically, but that's the way I found out that works a, works a little bit more. Like it, you get a lot more wax on the pen and it's way easier to apply. Now, once you have the wax on the pen and ready to apply it to the model, you get the wax and you let the drip kind of take control of where you're placing your pen. You don't really want your pen to touch your model. You're not pushing the pen into the model or anything like that. You let the drip kind of control the flow of your wax. So you let it drip on there and then you just let your pen just flow with the with the drip process and you just let go okay so you're not pushing it onto the wax model you're not you know digging the pen in anywhere you just touch and go touch and go this is kind of a better clip of what i'm talking about so watch the wax drip and watch my pen movement see touch and go all right, you're not digging into the model, you're not doing anything too crazy, you just let the wax take control base pretty much. After all that, you pretty much got yourself a pretty solid model, man. It looks pretty good, you know? You pat yourself on the back. You just wanna go back after you add the wax and go ahead and just, you know, file it down a little bit with your wax carving tools. Yeah, it doesn't look the greatest. Like I said, I was just trying to make a quick video. It could look a lot better than this, but this is pretty much the gist of it, man. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I really hope you learned something. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Peace.